Wow. You know. Um, uh, television, you know, mass communication. If you look at the history of television, it was for marketing and advertising, uh, for philanthropy. Communication to maintain status quo through class warfare and philanthropy. That's the history of television. So when you get people that use television and say it's for journalism and it's integrity and your commercials, you listen to them, you know, which truth and this and that, and people need tires. It's like, no, you need to live the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Then if you need tires, that'll take care of itself. All right. All things are that way. You know, you live the Lord's Prayer, uh, everything else will take care of itself. Um, when they're operating genocidal operations through manipulation, uh, and then they worry about population numbers, they worry about exponential growth and things like that. Um, when we went on COVID protocols, okay, that was under false pretenses. Okay. Essential workers doing what was essential. Okay. Those were people that were dying because of aggressive, irrational economic conflict and the environment reacting to this violence and then us having to be restrained from killing each other through attacking one another and it affecting nature where nature had to literally fight back to for us and nature to survive okay. that's what was happening during covid okay. and then people will try to sit there well it was trump economics that did it economics okay are not based on reality Right, they're not based on reality. You're using linguistics to manipulate people through forms of technological communication, manipulating them with the fallacy and the abuse of acceptance of philanthropy. Right. You ever had a conversation with a man named uh, Sun Yat-sen? And, you know, I, I had to have that conversation with a... Uh, you know, because I sat there and I wondered, you know, I was like, I, I did the same thing with... with uh, Hi hump, you know, why'd you touch the bullet to your mouth? He didn't. Okay, that was a story. Yeah, you know, I when I had to explain to Jesus you have to go be crucified. You know, that's a horrible conversation to have to have. To have to talk with someone that's innocent and brave and kind and the example of eternal fidelity and courage and kindness in man. And tell him you have to go be brutally abused. And, you know, your body just be beat to, to where it stops, will stop functioning. Okay. Because you have to be this example of courage and love and faith. And when I had the conversations with Sun Yat Sen, you know, I didn't want to talk with him because I knew he was being murdered uh, by cancer and by his own people. Okay. And I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to open up that wound, you know. And I was sitting there, and as I was going to check the mail, him and D.T. Suzuki were talking with me. It's like, Earl, it had to be done. If, okay, he had went to a healer and then was poisoned to death, there would have been mass revolts, mass excuses for violent people to mass murder, which would have made China susceptible to foreign manipulation and invasion, and the Industrial Revolution would have, well, revolution would have took hold in China, and we would have had over a billion people doing what they do in New York City, in Chicago, in El Paso, and in Los Angeles. All right. Do you know what the Chinese and the Indians would have done to the environment and the planet and all of us had they been like the United States of America during the time of World War One and Two? The 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 extent you know the Japanese we're going through and changing that, that the Chinese were the resistance to it. And then so you're, you're saying the Chinese were the good guys and the Americans were the bad guys and the Japanese copying the Americans. I'm saying one was the establishment of class warfare through status quo of oppression and one was fighting against that oppression but wanting to remain a status quo through aggression. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying either side is correct. 
Neither side is living the ways of Confucius, of the Buddha, of the Krishna, of Christ, of the Rosa Mecca, or of Haile Selassie. Neither side, okay, is standing up for the apply the thoughts, language, and and actions of applied physics of language is perfect, eternally perfect in the faith of the Lord's Prayer. Okay, that, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm not saying anything to choose size in conflict over money with technology. All right. When you go on TV and you're making commercials now, say that you're going to vote in a contest to accept manipulation of money over you and your family. All right. And you have pictures of Elon Musk and Donald Trump and other people that engage in the same espionage, genocide, and murder through corporate greed, asking you to vote for them to be which side of the popularity contest to maintain the status quo through violent oppression, whether it be through acceptance of the oppression, through submission to the oppression, or through violent interactives of might makes right or just you know because but basically they're doing in the united states right now is trying to get you to accept the ways of the people that are the chinese that killed sun yat sin because they wanted to keep class warfare in place through submission through oppression through just accept your fate all okay? right you vote in popularity contest over money you are accepting your fate and you're passing it on to your children you are not accepting the love and the faith of Jesus Christ. You are not accepting the love and the faith of Muhammad of Mecca. You are not accepting the love and the faith of Hela Selassie of Ethiopia. You are accepting the conflict, the status quo warfare of landed aristocracy that were slaveholders and considered their own women and children property. Okay? You are trained at their institutions of indoctrination and legislation you have no capacity to truly educate and liberate your children or yourself from indoctrination and legislation you have no capacity to live lives of education and liberation you are complete slaves to your brain chemical addictions and your dopamine reactions to feeling euphoria of winning contests like what happened in 2012 when I went to the hotel where my mother used to work and my brother-in-law used to work Howard Johnson's oh, wow. near where the Cunninghams used to live in that trailer park and me and the young I can't remember she's such a sweetheart the young lady from El Paso there was a euphoria of we won the good guys won and the bad guys lost okay and it was just like the Star Wars movies. Yay, look, there's there's Hayden Christensen and Ian McGregor and 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 Frank Oz's puppet. Over there we won. And then 15 years later, they come up with the new republic with the kids and the, the offspring of Han Solo and Carrie Fisher. It's even worse than it was before. Because there was no Lord's Prayer to a galaxy a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. There's no Lord's Prayer to space, the final frontier. We are the voyagers of the star trip, energize, enterprise, whatever, enterprise. How fitting that they called it enterprise, right? How life is an entertaining art, right? And so we've got to understand the technology is reflection of people like myself throughout history will eventually correct the linguistics of the mythology of the works they call the Gospels for religious communications. Okay. Eckhart Tolle can go quote books left by people that are written down to give us a perception of someone like Judah Krishnamurti. Okay. Krishnamurti did a very good job. Okay. D.T. Suzuki did a very good job, but D.T. Suzuki tells me over and over again, okay. don't believe any of the books I ever wrote or said anything I ever said about myself. It's completely taken out of context and giving you into context that make me look as if I'm saying things a certain manner in order to maintain the status quo of intellectual competition and comparison. Okay? They're not going to release the complete works of any of my writings that make sense out of nonsense. Okay? 
The same with Judy Krishnamurti, the same with Ellen Watts, the same with everybody. Okay? They're not going to release a pragmatic conversation that everyone has access to and say, this was great dialogue, this was great literature. And you don't say it was great. Because there's nothing great about being a good person. You don't compare yourself to others. You're not, this person's really bad, that person's really great. You live the Lord's Prayer, everybody's being good. If someone says, I don't want to live the Lord's Prayer, it's like, why don't you want to be good? Because I want to be great. Well, too damn bad. Hey, look, it's your Stanley Yelnets box. Watch out for the bitch with the rattlesnake venom in the uh, nail polish. She'll get you like a viper. And uh, George Herbert Bush pretending, uh, you know, all they're going to ask you when you get back home is, did you do it in Lincoln bedroom? Right? He turned out to be a pretty good guy. If you're stupid and believe money's are real, and I, I really like Dana Carvey, he made me laugh, but if he still believes money's real, he's stupid. And does God have feet? God's omniscient, omnipotent. All the feet on the planet are provided by the omnipotent essence of God. So how would you answer that question about God having feet? All right, guys, I love you, all right? Peace out.